Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and we're taking a look today at the ThinkPad X1 from Lenovo. This is the latest seventh generation of their X1 carbon device, and we're going to be taking a closer look at what is pretty much the quintessential executive laptop here in just a second. Now, I do want to let you know, though, in the interest of full disclosure, this is on loan from Lenovo. So when we're done with this, it goes back to them. All of the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. And I should also let you know that Lenovo is a past sponsor of the channel, but they are not sponsoring this video. So let's get into it now and see what this laptop is all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. Uh, these start at about 1300 bucks and kind of go up from there. Uh, the one we're looking at today, I think you can probably piece out for $1,400 to $1,500. Uh, this one has an i7-8565U quad-core processor inside. Uh, some of the newer ones now have a 10th generation Intel chip as an option, uh, but the lower end of the X1 Carbon line will be using the prior generation chips. I was surprised that it only has DDR3 RAM on board, which will impact its performance for a lot of higher-end tasks. Uh, this one comes configured with 16 gigabytes. I believe the RAM is soldered on, so you can't upgrade it. Uh, it has a 14-inch display. Uh, this one has a 1080p resolution, which I think is the sweet spot for this particular device. Uh, it looks fine at 14 inches. It's actually 13.9 to be exact. Uh, really not an issue here. Color is nice and sharp. It's decent and bright. Good viewing angles on it. Uh, so I would probably say go with this. There is a higher resolution available for more money. It might look a little nicer than 1080p, but to be honest with you, at this size, it's a negligible difference, and you're going to be getting a huge battery hit with the 4K version of this in particular. So my advice is stick with the 1080p, save yourself some money in battery life, and I think you'll be very pleased with what they have paired up with this device, even with their low-end display. Uh, the storage on this one is a 256 gigabyte NVMe SSD. You can upgrade the storage later if you wish, or of course configure it with a larger drive when you purchase it. So that's one option you have uh, to upgrade down the road. Uh, weight on this is 2.04 uh, pounds or 1.08 kilograms. Not all that heavy, and this has always been one of the strong suits of the X1 Carbon line. They are extremely lightweight. It will surprise you how lightweight it is when you first pick it up. And if you are someone who often feels the weight of that four-pound laptop in your backpack, uh, this will cut the weight down in half, and it's really a pleasure to walk around with. Really nice-feeling device. Uh, it does pick up a lot of fingerprints and stuff, so you will be having to wipe it down occasionally, but overall they've done a nice job uh, with the casing on this one. Uh, it's not metal, but it's got a mixture of metal, plastic, and carbon fiber, I believe, to uh, provide strength, yet uh, not a lot of weight. So I think uh, you'll be pretty pleased with how it feels for the price point. Uh, they made it a little bit thinner than the prior edition, but it has room for full-size ports. So you have an HDMI output here along with a full-size USB 3 port. Uh, you also have two Thunderbolt 3 ports here on the other side. Uh, these are full service ports, so they can provide power in along with data devices for Thunderbolt and USB Type-C, and you can have display going out of those as well. So if you have one of those docking stations, one of those Thunderbolt 3 docks, you can plug a single cable in, get video out, power in, and then uh, get access to some of the USB devices you might want to plug into that dock, again, all through a single cable. Uh, these are four-lane Thunderbolt ports, so it's all up to date on everything, and you could plug in an external GPU with this as well if you wanted to do that, because uh, this only has the Intel GPU inside. Uh, right over here is a network jack. This is uh, to be used with a little dongle that will allow you to plug in a full-size Ethernet cable. They couldn't fit that RJ45 here on the case, so there is a dongle for Ethernet but you can connect that network without having to use any of the USB ports in the process there. So that's an option for you there. And of course, you've got a headphone microphone jack. On the other side, we've got another full-size USB 3 port, the standby power button here. You have your fan exhaust over here, and then you've got a Kensington lock for locking it down on a desk so nobody walks away with it. Uh, this is not a fanless device. It's not all that loud, though, but it will kick that fan on when the computer is under load. 
Uh, so just be advised it's not a fanless laptop. I like the fact that you can fold the display down completely flat like this. Uh, you can't uh, get any touch functionality out of the 1080p base display here, but it is nice to have that range of motion so a kid might not accidentally snap the display off if they push it down too far. Uh, so that's an option you got. Uh, the keyboard feels slightly different than other ThinkPads I have used recently, uh, partly because the travel on it is not as deep as you might expect out of a ThinkPad, just because this one is so thin. So it might take a little bit of getting used to, especially if you're coming from an older, larger ThinkPad. The keys will feel similar uh, in their size and distance, but the travel is, again, not as deep. So that might be something you'll want to play around with to get used to. Uh, you also have the nub here, uh, which is something you see on every ThinkPad. It wouldn't be one without the nub and you've got your mouse buttons here to control that. You also have a really nice trackpad down here that has a nice spring to it, is very, very accurate in its tracking and really nice to use. So altogether, a very nice premium experience. Uh, the sound quality out of this thing is pretty good too. It's got four speakers. I believe it's an Atmos system, uh, and it really sounds nice. You get a lot of spatialness to the audio. Uh, that really surprised me. It kind of comes from all around you based on how they've positioned the speakers. That sounds nice. Not a lot of bass to it, uh, but the sound quality does have a good range, a very good stereo separation as well. So decent for music and movies, and of course for video conferencing and that sort of thing. Uh, speaking of video conferencing, you have a manual shutter here on the webcam. This is something that Lenovo includes now in most of their laptops, so you can just shut that uh, camera lens with an, an actual physical shutter uh, without having to use tape and stuff up there, but it does not support facial recognition for login. You have to do that through the fingerprint sensor here at the bottom to get into it. So altogether, a very nice piece of hardware, very lightweight, it feels solid and premium, and it has a nice display even at the low end. Let's take a look now and see how it performs because from our performance testing, this is not going to be for everyone. Let's have a look. Now, as I mentioned at the outset, this is kind of the quintessential executive laptop. It's something you'll see at a lot of airports, and it's something that a lot of corporations buy in bulk uh, to issue out to their employees. And as such, it does very well at those kinds of tasks. If you're accessing resources with a web browser, everything is going to respond very quickly here, as you can see. If you're using Microsoft Word and other applications, all of that stuff has a nice amount of performance here. It's very responsive, no lag to anything. It's a really nice experience. A little bit earlier, we also tested its video playback capability with my 1080p 60 video from my YouTube channel. Uh, there we had no drop frames and everything was performing just fine. So email, web browsing, Microsoft Office, all good. In fact, on our speedometer benchmark test that we run to measure how well it will perform on the web, uh, we got a nice score of 200.4 on the first version of that test and 115 on version 2.0 of that test. And it does very well here against even a few other Lenovo devices with the same processor. So for those quick hit things, it does very well. But we noticed that we were getting a big disparity in performance when we placed the processor under heavy sustained load. Uh, this would be something that you would experience if you're doing a lot of video editing, for example. And the best way to demonstrate this is to load up a couple of games. Now, in fairness, this is not a gaming laptop. But typically with non-gaming business laptops, we always see some consistency to performance when we're playing games. Uh, so let's take a look at Fortnite. And it starts off at about where I would expect this laptop to be as far as its frame rate is concerned. And then the frame rate just plummets. It'll stay at that low level for a little bit and then it will go right back up again and then dip back down again a little later. We noticed similar issues when we were playing with Rocket League. Again, decent performance for a little bit and then a lot of laggy uh, freezes and then a drop and then it'll shoot back up again and continue going on. And also even with older games like Half-Life 2, uh, we saw very similar performance there as well. Now, typically in a review like this, I would put up the 3D Mark CloudGate benchmark test, which would give us a good idea as to where this machine stacks up against the other ones. But due to this issue, every time we ran the test, we got different scores, and there was a huge disparity from one test to the next, to the point where I can't really accurately give you a measurement of this computer. Uh, we also saw some of this disparity when we were running the 3D Mark stress test, 
which measures how well the machine does under sustained load. And there we can give you some idea of the scores we were getting. Uh, so one test came in at 60%, which is a very low score. Another one came in at 88%. A third one came in at 61.9%. And a fourth one uh, around 55.2. Uh, so we're seeing this crazy real flux here in how it performs under sustained load. And we waited for a few updates to come down before we did this review just to see if maybe a BIOS update would uh, tune some of the thermals on the laptop to maybe uh, kind of smooth this out a bit, but it hasn't done so. So I think this is the performance you can expect. And as such, I would not recommend this for people that are doing a lot of heavy processor intensive work. It's going to be fine as an executive level laptop for doing all the things we just talked about. But if you are doing things like video editing or any kind of high-end production work, uh, this is definitely not going to be the laptop for you. Now, battery life on the laptop with the 1080p display, we're coming in in around 9 to 10 hours doing basic kinds of tasks with it. Uh, so it'll definitely get through a work day or a long flight, perhaps. Again, though, you'll see a pretty big dip in battery performance on the higher resolution displays. So stick to that 1080p display, turn the brightness down a bit, and you'll get through a good chunk of the workday, if not all of it, uh, with this laptop. And that's really important for an executive level device. And as you'll notice on here, we've got Ubuntu loaded up right now. This is Ubuntu 19.04, and it's been running great with this. So I think Linux is going to be an option uh, on this machine if you want to install it. So display is working, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, uh, all the things that we typically hope to see working with Linux is working here. Uh, so you can see just how snappy and responsive it is. And that's one of the key strengths of this laptop is that it can do these little bursty tasks uh, quite well, but it's the sustained stuff that you're going to see some disparities in performance. So as such, I'm going to recommend this for uh, the task that it was designed for, mostly executive level work. Uh, but doing any kind of gaming, I think, is out of the question on this one. And I would also caution people that plan to do some degree of video editing to perhaps look at a different computer, just because when you really put this under load and are doing a lot of transcoding and that sort of thing, you're going to see the performance kind of jump around a bit, and it might be a bit frustrating in the process. So weird performance out of this one, but we did uh, wait a bit and put in a bunch of updates to see if it might change. But it looks like this is how it is going to work. Uh, so just keep that in mind as you are shopping, but it is a nice, lightweight, portable, and decent performing device for, again, the kinds of things that an executive might do with it. That's going to do it for our look at the X1 Carbon, and until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, Brian Parker, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.